These are the most powerful fighter jets on the planet. They're fast, stealthy, and lethal. But they are super rare, and some cost as much as $412 billion to develop and build. So which are the most advanced fighters in the sky? And what will the jets of the future be capable of? Let's find out. Welcome to Explained. Fighter jets are the most feared machines in any Air Force, and they've evolved significantly over time. Gen 1 fighter jets had basic propulsion, machine guns and unguided rockets, and literally no self-protection measures. Gen 2 had swept wings, range-only radar, and infrared missiles. Then came Gen 3, which featured supersonic speed, pulse radar, and could shoot at targets beyond visual range. Gen 4 and 4.5 are the most commonly used today, and they have good maneuverability, look-down, shoot-down missiles, and reduced signatures. But these jets were designed in the 1970s, which means that they're almost outdated. And this also means that the F-A-16s that Tom Cruise flew in Top Gun Maverick will soon be replaced. Gen 5, on the other hand, are the most advanced. So what makes a 5th gen better than a 4th gen jet? The answer is stealth. It's because we've made advances with material science and technology and computers. So everything now is, is about speed, agility, um, better situational awareness for the, for, for the crews, better weaponry, and above all that is the stealth technology that's being included on these aircraft now so that they're increasingly more difficult to see by conventional radar. Designing and developing Gen 5 jets is so expensive, only four models are in operation. And only three countries managed to build them. Let's take a look at the four Gen 5 aircraft in existence. Starting with number four, Russia's Su-57 Felon. The Sukhoi Su-57 is Russia's first stealth aircraft. It's covered with a radio-absorbing coating, and it's made from materials that give it a low infrared signature and low radar visibility. This fighter jet can cruise continuously at supersonic speed, which is Mach 1.7, but what sets it apart is its low speed maneuverability. When it comes to attacking, its advanced infrared search and track feature can bypass enemy jammers. In a dogfight, it could shoot down enemies with close combat 30mm air guns, or fire its four K-77M air-to-air missiles, and even air-to-ground missiles in more intense battles. If the Su-57 comes under attack, its powerful onboard computer can act as an electronic secondary pilot. And even cooler, it can blind heat-seeking bogies with a modulated laser beam. These fighters are advanced, but they've had issues like engine fires in the past. At number three is China's J-20, AKA the Mighty Dragon. The Chengdu J-20 is deadly, and China's got over 50 of them. Its massive engines allow it to fly faster and further than other fighters in China's fleet. Attacking enemies from a long distance is its specialty, and its design allows it to carry more weapons on board, like four medium to long-range missiles and two short-range missiles. The deadliest thing about the modern ones, such as the J-20 from China, is the fact that it's so new, we have so little information about it. We know it's a good aircraft, we know it's very capable, it's obviously modern and it does have stealth technology. Air combat is very much like a game of chess. You can't really fight your opponent unless you know their capabilities. What really sets the J-20 apart is how customizable it is. The J-20 can be configured into a bomber version, an electronic warfare version, a carrier-based version, and there are rumors of an unmanned flight and drone control version coming out too. So how much did all this cost? Research and development alone was $4.4 billion, and to build each plane separately was around $100 to $120 million. At number two comes the USA's F-22 Raptor. With its stealth, agility, low observability, and situational awareness, the F-22 is designed for air dominance. 
but it's not just about being sneaky. This fighter can fly at speeds higher than Mach 2.25, and it can cruise at supersonic speeds with ease. In reality, if you're operating an aircraft that fast, it will start to heat up the, the surface of that aircraft, which means even though you've got stealth technology to combat radar, it means people can start identifying you using thermal and infrared systems. In addition to that, when you're operating at those speeds, if you then turn, the G-forces would be tremendous. And anything over 9G uh, puts a huge amount of pressure on the body uh, your breathing is very difficult, uh, your blood supply to your head starts to be restricted, which can cause you to black out, and it's like very, very physical exercise. The F-22 is capable of close-range dogfighting with 20mm cannons, and its long-range infrared and radar guide missiles help with beyond visual range combat in the air and during ground attacks. But what sets the F-22 apart is its ability to collect and share tactical information with friendly fighters. And this allows the US and its allies to coordinate effectively during a battle. Each F-22 costs $143 million, and the US has about 183 of them. Finally, the number one fifth generation fighter jet is the USA's F-35. With low observable stealth features, the F-35 can evade detection and enter enemy airspace. It flies at Mach 1.6, is highly maneuverable, and carries weapons internally in stealth configuration. Its long-range AESA radar scans the skies ahead of it, while the electronic warfare system lets it locate and track enemies, jam radars, and disrupt attacks. One of the things that makes it absolutely superb is the low radar cross-section. So if you take something like a four and a half generation fighter like the Eurofighter Typhoon here, you can see all these bits and pieces on the outside of the aircraft, okay? It's quite a complex structure and that gives it a quite a large radar cross-section. Something like the F-35 has the same radar cross-section as a golf ball. It's incredibly small and it's incredibly difficult to spot. The closer you can get to your enemy before they can spot you on the radar, better chance you have of making the first shot and getting the first kill. The F-35 makes the pilot's job a lot easier. It's got a helmet display system that creates an integrated picture of the battlefield. And if that wasn't enough, the DAS feature sends real-time images to the pilot's helmet from six infrared cameras mounted on the aircraft. There are a lot of F-35s in operation, and the U.S. is increasing that number to 2,470 aircraft in the coming years. How much is this expected to cost? $412 billion to develop and build, and $1.3 trillion to operate and maintain after that. Producing fifth-gen jets is costly, and some like India's HAL, AMCA, and Russia's Sukhoi Checkmate are still in the works. But get this, Generation 5 fighters were designed 20 years ago, so many countries are already working on Gen 6. So Generation 6 is going to be really interesting. I would expect to start seeing things like directed energy weapons, um, more commonly known as lasers. If I'm operating a Typhoon and I take a shot at an aircraft, it might take maybe one minute for that shot to reach the enemy aircraft. With a directed energy weapon, that takes no time at all as the energy will travel at the speed of light. So another thing will be the potential for going optionally manned. It means some days you may have the pilots in the aircraft, whereas other days you may choose to fly it remotely from the ground, which gives you more flexibility in any kind of high threat environment. The US have two Gen 6 jets underway. One is under the Next Generation Air Dominance or NGAD program, and the other is the FAXX for the Navy. Speculation says these jets will have control over drones and will be able to assign them missions while they engage other targets. Japan's working on the FX, and they've teamed up with the UK and Italy to build the Tempest. The Air Force will have the option of flying the Tempest with or without a pilot. It's supposed to have directed energy weapons, and an electronic warfare jamming, and an AR-VR interactive cockpit that has no physical dials. France, Germany, and Spain are working together on a sixth-gen jet called the Future Combat Air System. What crazy features would you like to see in sixth generation fighters? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Explained.